Okay, so when you're ready, you know, open your eyes, come back into the screen. <clears throat> So if you would like to share something, you can just wave your hand. Okay, so who would like to volunteer? Okay, I can see uh, Krishna is very keen. He just returned from a trip around and now he's back in Benyurti. Are you back in Benya, Krishna? Hello, Krishna, do you hear me? No, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Maybe a bit louder. I can go closer to the microphone. Probably that helps. That's good now, yeah. yeah. So what happened in the meditation? In the, I very often can fall very deep in the moment and this time and sometimes it's happening like um, thoughts or emotions coming. I can watch them very good and uh, there's also a big silent space where I'm somehow happy or where there's not much happening where it's just kind of big smile or something like that it's very nice okay yeah right. and how was your trip you know, I didn't get to meet you in the end but uh, did you have a good trip on the whole, it was great, and there was also a happening which was very, yeah, disturbing the whole thing. I was just a bit smashed. Everybody was turning away from me. It was just like I was having done something. I was just catching with my grandchild a little bit, with Mia and uh, her mother. It was just very angry with me and she said I was totally yeah she just dissed me completely I was out so but well, uh, this this situation can happen because when you do something like you've done which is to join a community of people interested in meditation and interested in knowing themselves People who are close to you, people who are your friends or family, they tend to get um, somehow touched by that, and often in a negative way, because um, what you're doing somehow confronts what they're doing. If you're not doing now anymore what they're doing, then they make a judgment against you, of course. So I don't know the whole situation, but it may not be any reason, really. It's just that um, you made a shift in your life. They maybe can also recognize you're very happy and relaxed, and this can also create some issues. Okay. Thank you. Very good point of view. Wow. Thanks. <clears throat> so, somebody who would like to volunteer, I prefer you to volunteer. Okay, Avashi. Yeah, hello. Yes, in the meditation, um, a lot of thoughts about the open day, how many pasta I need and tomato sauce and about so many people. 
but in the back there is still um, a joyful, peaceful space. And that carry, carries me, so that is very nice. To, not to lose the contact of, to this space with all this okay. organizing <laughs> and things to do. Yeah, I mean, maybe not everybody knows, but on tomorrow evening we start um, a weekend to celebrate our 20th anniversary of being a community here in uh, Hito. And um, we're expecting about 90 people to attend. And we'll start tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Actually, we're going to start at, I think, 6 o'clock with heart dance. And then at 8 o'clock tomorrow, we'll have a, a meeting with me. And um, so, yes, you have to plan and use your mind. But this doesn't necessarily have to affect you so much because um, it seems when you sit quietly, you quickly come to your own uh, silence inside, quiet inside. Yeah, it's very beautiful to have the opportunity to recognize this more you know, because of so much going on in the outside. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. And it's a, the, um, the opposite is more, we feel it more, yeah, right. like this. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> at busy times, then, of course, we're going to need to use the mind more. But it's not really the kind of mind that needs to disturb us so much. This mm -hmm. is like functioning mind. It's not a really thinking mind. So you're using your mind to think about, you know, whatever it is you're planning to cook or something like this. Mm -hmm. But it's not really the same as the normal uh, kind of mind which brings us in contact with our old conditionings and structures and maybe judgments it's it's not that kind of mind actually mm. and so it's not surprising that although you're very busy you can still stay um, in your own essence and it's rather lovely to see that of course yeah <laughs> Okay, very good. Uh, somebody else? So could I invite you, Philip? I haven't met you yet. You, does Philip speak English? Do we have translation if he doesn't speak English? Ravati, does he speak Philip? English? Can you mal was sagen, Philip? Oh, I can't hear him. He, he needs his sound putting on or? Yeah, he needs, he needs, um, I'll quickly go to him. Maybe as the next one, you can talk to him. Okay, this is a problem on his computer. Okay. Okay, I will come and help you, um, Philip. <clears throat> Saraswati, your, our recent, uh, New, new resident, what happened for you? Um, yeah, for me, this kind of meditation is, um, even though I do it every Wednesday now, um, very strange because it's not so easy for me to, to focus on my priorities. So in a way, for me, it's absolutely clear what I think or what I, what I feel or what I focus on, but I have the feeling it's like pieces next to each other, like um, nothing standing um, out of the others. But in 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 a whole, um, 
it's really relaxing and calm and quiet. So I, I enjoy this. Yeah, I mean, you don't really have to, um, <clears throat> I mean, you can just look and whatever is the strongest thing, you know, maybe a lot of thoughts are coming, you just then watch the thoughts. You don't have to choose something that is particularly important for you in the moment. You can just accept whatever it is and just keep your focus on that thing. It might be, you know, your knee might be painful and you have um, focus then on your knee, you know, physical things. And whatever you find in the beginning, it nearly always changes. You don't need to change anything. It goes by itself. Okay. Good. <clears throat> okay, Philip. Do do you hear me, Philip? Or Hello. We share them all. Do you need translation, Philip? Oh, or... yeah. Okay. Indira, are you translating? Okay, Indira, du kannst jetzt übersetzen. Okay. Can you translate, Indira? He needs to speak first. <laughs> Ich spreche, ja. Du kannst jetzt sprechen, ja, ja. Ja, ich bin hier mit meinem Sohn. Zum I'm here with Mo my son. Okay. Uh, nice. für, für zum Helfen am Open Day. I am helping at the Open Day. Oh, that's very yes. nice of you. I understand you may be a cook, is that right? You Bist du der Koch, ist das richtig? Ja, ich bin der Koch, genau. <laughs> Come to save for yes. My Beruf is Koch and that's help ich as Koch, yeah. <laughs> as yes, hilf. my profession is 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 cook cook. Okay. Good. So in the meditation, and did you notice anything in particular would you like to share? In the meditation, is there was besonderes aufgefallen, was du gerne mitteilen möchtest? Ja, ich hatte jetzt eher ein bisschen Mühe, tiefer zu kommen. Ich versuchte es. Ich hatte normalerweise so zum Abtauchen, aber ich hatte ein bisschen... Normalerweise bin ich alleine. Mein Sohn ist das erste Mal dabei. Und es war jetzt ein bisschen schwieriger für mich abzutauchen. Wir sind viele Gedanken so durch den is... Kopf gegangen. So this time it was a bit more difficult for me to come deeper. Usually I can dive deeper, but usually I'm also on my own. So this time my son is with me here. So there were some thoughts. Okay. Are you regularly Aber meditating? Meditierst du regelmäßig? Uh, regelmäßig nicht täglich, aber uh, so einmal in der Woche, zweimal meditiere ich. Ja. Once or twice a week I'm meditating. Since some time or just recently started? Schon seit einiger Zeit oder hast du kürzlich erst begonnen? Zeit. Einige Zeit, jetzt zwei, drei Jahre, eher regelmäßig. Since two or three years, regularly. Oh, good. good. And how did you come to the community? You... Und wie bist du hier zur Gemeinschaft gekommen? Ich war im Juni ähm, Workshop, also 21 bis auf 24. Juni. I came to a workshop here in June. Okay, which kind of workshop was that? 
Was für ein Workshop war das? Das war der Tantra-Kurs oder Berührungskurs Tantra. Das war der Tantra-Kurs von Rada, uh, the Tantra-Workshop mm -hmm. von Rada. Oh, okay, good. good. Yeah, I think I didn't meet you that weekend. Yeah. So nice to meet you now. I'm sure we'll meet uh, in the next days. Ja, yeah, schön dich kennenzulernen. Ich denke, wir werden uns in den nächsten Tagen noch begegnen. Da freue ich mich natürlich. Yes, I'm happy about this. Good. Okay, so so tonight I'm going to continue to um, take a chapter from this book. Also heute Abend werde ich weiter mit diesen Kapiteln aus diesem Buch And in fact, machen. Uh, from chapter three. Aus dem Kapitel 3. And this chapter is titled Be As You Are. Und das Kapitel heißt Sei wie du bist. So this is a, a very profound das statement. Ist ein sehr tiefgehendes statement. And in a way, maybe it's obvious. Vielleicht ist es offensichtlich. But uh, it's easy to forget. Aber es ist einfach, dass wir es vergessen. If you could be different, you would be. Indira is in the background again translating. If this is not the right place, you would be some other place. You are probably just discovering what it is to be free. You are discovering that it is to be yourself. And you are completely allowed, not because you are here in this community, but because you're running around on this planet. And uh, because our life is easily caught up in a kind of robotic conditioning from when we were very small and in the society with our friends and acquaintances around us, people we meet as we go through our life, it's very easy to make judgments in a, in a judgment. It's very easy for us to compare ourselves with other people. He is more beautiful than me, or he's taller. I always wanted to be taller. Or she's blonde. I would love to have blonde hair. And so on. It's very easy to get caught up in these kind of judgments when we compare ourselves with somebody else. You know? And then it's very easy to kind of wish that you weren't who you are, but in fact you were somebody else. This is unfortunately very, very common that people are constantly, if you like, not satisfied with who they are and where they are, but they think that they could be more happy if, for example, their hair was blonde or they were not here, but they were somewhere else. <clears throat> it's very easy to um, not really accept where you are and, and who you are. And uh, this is a kind of funny, funny situation because of course we can't really change who we are. Superficially, we may think that we can become somebody else and um, a lot of us get caught up with that, comparing ourselves with other people who we would somehow prefer to be. And it's easy to imagine that all the other people really know something and only you don't know this something, you see? So they are something different from you and maybe you desire what they seem to be. So this is a constant kind of behavior inside us. And this keeps us kind of divided against our, our nature, against ourselves. And so, um, although we can um, have the idea that we could transform into something else, something a bit better, but what could be more simple than to be as we are? 
Yet it's almost impossible because most of us are simply divided against ourselves. <clears throat> we have one part, probably the part that sits with us for a beautiful sunrise, that is a kind of Wi-Fi system or navigation system. Or indeed, we can come to understand that this is the divine wisdom, which in the old days was called God. But at least John David doesn't call it God anymore, because this is rather complicated. But I call it design, divine wisdom. It's connected to a big satellite up there somewhere that we call the divine wisdom. And it's guiding us step by step through our lives. Sometimes we come into harmony with that. And for a few moments, we feel a deep sense of peace and oneness. It's as if suddenly everything is exactly as it should be. We call that a spiritual experience. But we are simply being who we truly are in that moment. So I'd like to, to stop a moment so that we can uh, a bit dialogue about it. If somebody would like to dialogue about this aspect, how we can so easily be divided against ourselves. We tend to be have been easily conditioned with the idea that you know everybody else is better than we are and this of course isn't isn't a nice way to live because we can never really be content we can never really be in peace when we are constantly judging ourselves against other people she is more beautiful than me she he is more taller than me and so on all kinds of non-stop judgments are possible in our daily lives so i thought i would ask uh, carly to comment on this as she's slightly an expert <laughs> yes this is my whole life kind of feeling seeing something better in other people and instead of being like kind of uh, taking a as the kind of inspiration or some something in this direction, it often goes against me. It's like, oh, I'm 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 I cannot have it or something like I don't know, like energetic energetically also it something close is always and this jealousy is and blocking me off or yeah, but it's not only with other people, it's also with myself is always this kind of wanting it better or thinking like how it is now is yeah not good enough or something so this is um yeah it was a long time like this and it's still often like this but also i had many moments where it just disappeared and it is it is these moments, yeah, when you have a glimpse or uh, some other, it, it doesn't have really, it doesn't relate to anything. It can just be not there in this moment. So, yeah. Yeah, have you noticed that when those moments happen, yeah, when I kind of, there's a kind of peace descending, that can you see that you didn't do anything? Yeah, exactly. It's, just maybe the strongest, there. Thing you, the strongest thing that you did in that moment was not to make judgments about yourself yeah yeah sharing with another person so if you yeah. stop those kind of behavior then maybe it's basically fine to be as you are yeah then it's not so personal anymore it's just that yeah it's not um has nothing to do with me or something yeah and of course this me who is this me yeah this is the question which uh, doesn't come up there in this moment 
and there is too much um, feeling of this person like this um, this feels very tight and small kind of <clears throat> and when you talk about this you see that it's a little bit silly you know, to judge yourself uh, and judge yourself in comparison to other people yeah it's um I feel this low energy of this judgment. It's really like dragging, dragging energy. And um, yeah, it often makes no sense. It's yeah. a huge habit, I would say, a huge, huge habit. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I think recently in the last months, you've become a bit more aware about that, yeah? that it's a habit and this habit doesn't serve you because anyway you can't change yourself you're always going to be what you are you know you're going to be a girl with curly hair and um, whatever you are and you're going to be the same height more or less as you are you're going to be probably you know having certain um, qualities um, which you always had and which gradually develop in your life as you go on through your life. So, <clears throat> for example, here in the community, it, it was discovered that you have a talent for editing films. And now you've gone through a process and you we put up on my website about 15 of your films <laughs> and they all have some kind of quality that you can say is Carly's quality in those films yeah? mm. and then that leads you to doing other kind of films you know and this is something that you particularly enjoy which you seem to have a talent for and so it seems that the divine wisdom decided okay Carly will make films you see <laughs> so it's not the only thing you could do but anyway, in this moment of your life, this has come to you. It feels for you something you would like to say yes to, and then it's happening. Mm. Yeah. And then other people, you know, there may be other people wandering around in the community who are now judging that Carly is good at making films and they're not, you see. <laughs> so you can't imagine this because it's usually you doing those judgments. But <laughs> after making a few good films, it can be there's somebody else lurking around who would like to be making films. And somehow the divine wisdom had them doing being good at doing something else, you see. So life is like that, you see. And while we're constantly um, divided against ourselves, then, of course, life is a bit complicated. Because mm. inevitably, even if you would like to change yourself, there's some kind of limits. And for example, you're, you're kind of a woman, I think. And you might have an interest to, to be a man. But unfortunately, going from a woman to a man is pretty difficult unless you live in California, you know, where they spend <laughs> doing that. So... Um, mm. What Ramana Mahesh is one of the sort of central elements of his teaching was to encourage people to, when they came to see him, to encourage people to accept themselves exactly as they are. And he had this kind of knack or ability to um, completely accept people as 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 they were. You know, he didn't. I mean, if you listen to him, if you read his dialogues, for example, with seekers who came to talk to him, you very rarely get any sense of judgment from him. Mm. So he accepted all kind of funny people. This book we did recently, um, there is quite a few descriptions of different seekers who came to him. I'm remembering, for example, there was there was a French man who came to me in about 1936. And this man was very well dressed, you know, to the point where everybody in the ashram was kind of laughing about this guy because he was so particularly dressed in a sort of 
French with French cultural style or something. Yeah, I can't remember exactly now the description, but um, his costume was so funny for the Indian guys who probably just had some, you know, very light shirt and baggy pants or something like this, and this guy was up in a suit and a hat and everything you know he was perfect for paris in the winter but not really for india in the summer and so everybody's <laughs> sort of giggling about him but when you when you hear uh, when you listen uh really dialogue between him and ramana mahashi there's no hint at all that ramana found him a strange guy you see mm. so ramana had this ability just to accept everybody as they were because deep down, of course, he accepted himself as he was. So this is yeah. this really is like a life-changing situation once you can simply accept yourself as you are. And to accept yourself as you are, you don't have to do anything. This is what's so wonderful. There's nothing to do to make yourself who you are. You're already who you are. You've already always been who you are. You just have to stop doing these kind of comparisons and judgments mm. and they divide you yeah? so you have to see what causes you to try to um, be different where does this come from yeah? mm. okay maybe one more person likes to wave their arm So I think we'll invite Atma. Hello, Atma and Denya. Hello. Hello. So are you familiar with this subject? That uh, um, I cannot accept. You hear me? I that I cannot you. accept myself? Well, do you accept yourself mm. as you are? Mm, sometimes. But um, not always. So there are some moments where I totally accept uh, whatever it comes and feels wonderful. And um, there are moments, it's not like this, but uh, when there are moments, sometimes I remember that it's just carry on and um, it's also okay like it is now. All right. And do you, do you see the point? Actually, you can't really change who you are. Changes can happen in time. Things change. But it's not any any change from you. You can try to change, but it doesn't really work, or only in a very superficial way. Yeah, I call it unpatient. <laughs> You, you what? Call it impatient. I call it un unpa unpatient. Right. And when you're being patient, what does that feel like? Mm, calm and waiting what is coming. Okay. So what do you do? You sit down and wait for no it. No stress. Do you sit down and wait for it to come, or does it anyway come by itself? Mm, it, it comes somehow with deep trust. Right. 
so I need deep trust to um, to be patient to that everything what is coming is the perf the best um, for me in this moment. Okay. But whether it's the best for you or not the best for you, you see that you don't really have a choice. And that actually you don't really need to decide, is this the best for me or is there something around the corner be better for me? Yeah. Yeah, there is no choice, um, but there are thoughts or some feeling um, when I'm thinking about to go there, then I feel a deep longing or... Um, but... But it's still not not real. It's just something what it's some kind of energy. Um, and yeah, sometimes I get lost in it. Yeah. Um, or I simply accept that there is this imagination. Mm. And I observe. Okay. So, I mean, when you say you observe, that that observing somehow uh, requires a certain confidence in how life is unfolding, how your life is unfolding. The rightness of the divine wisdom's choices for you. So recently you were moving from the German community to the Spanish community. And I understand that, that you rather like it there. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. So then when it's wonderful, you can more easily maybe accept what's happening. If the weather would change and you would get the mm -hmm. kind of weather we're having here, which is pretty much raining every day, then you could easily get dissatisfied, I think. I would also be happy about this. <laughs> I like rain. Oh, okay, you're happy with the rain all the time. Very good, very good. But you know, you know rather well about yourself that that's not always the case, yeah? That you have some ideas how you would like things to be. Is that right? Yeah. So that, that's yes, I the word, have. you know, the word called surrender. So... Nobody would expect that you're going to surrender your whole being to the divine wisdom, yeah? And certainly not tomorrow. But if you understand this process of surrender, which is a kind of expression of trust towards existence, if you could uh, trust more, and if you like, therefore surrender more, you would actually be surrendering to what? Would you be surrendering and come becoming somebody else? I don't think so. You would be surrendering to the deepest part of your own being, wouldn't you? Yeah, I when I come really into trust and uh, then I can surrender to what is really there. And this, and this be happens, as you are. This, this happens quite automatically, doesn't it? You don't have to do a lot. You just find yeah. now I'm trusting. Yeah. 
Yeah, but as you say, I'm a beginner and um, it's just sometimes happening. Well, you're, you're, you're not really a beginner because you're old enough to be uh, already on this planet for more than 20 years. Yeah, then I'm not the beginner. <laughs> no, you're not a beginning. You're not a beginning human being because you've been around for already quite a long time. You're maybe a beginner in the sense that you don't have a deep surrender and you don't seem to have a deep, deep trust in life. Yeah. And yeah, you, this is, you could, uh, you, could um, you could choose. I think this this trust is this. Yeah. I mean, you could see that. I just wanted to say um, this trust in life, this deep trust. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah what do you want to what were you going to say about the deep trust that you have a deep trust in life do you no that this is a really important point and when i go into that and say i really like to trust in life um and it's coming more deep inside. It's helping me. And I want to develop that because it's for me a very good way to come then automatically in this rendering. All right. So good. Well, so now you're saying that you realize that this trust uh, is very important. So, I mean, it, it's not about trusting this thing or that thing. It's a general kind of feeling of trust that, that you can imagine up in the sky, there is a huge complex machine, you know, and this is a very intelligent machine. And it's able to manage the lives of 8 billion people every moment. Very, very intelligent. And uh, it manages to arrange everything in such a way that most days you get to eat lunch along with everybody else. So this is, of course, a super intelligent machine up there, which, as I said before, I call could call the divine wisdom. So do you want to trust the divine wisdom or do you want to trust some kind of conditioned ideas that you have acquired in your young life? What do you I, reckon? I need to figure out what is what. And of course, I like to develop to trust in the divine um, universal wisdom, what is everywhere. Right, right. Yes, I mean, of course, that's a very good choice, because as you, as you fall deeper into trust, then, in fact, you align, aligning yourself with the divine wisdom. And whatever the plan is of the divine wisdom, whatever your kind of destiny is, yeah, and you can accept it, and gradually you suddenly discover that there's more trust, and out of this more trust, there's also more kind of a harmony inside, because when you are constantly wanting to be some somewhere or some. Uh, some sense of yourself different from what you are now, this this never allows you to be in harmony, in fact. Okay. 
be as you are. And, you know, I've, I've written this to you in the last days. I mean, you, you're, you're lucky because you're, you have a very nice being and you can just trust who you are because you're a very nice human being. You don't do any terrible things except to yourself by not trusting. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to read a bit more. Unfortunately, most of the time, we become identified with our other part, our story based on a character we call me. This story has become very familiar over the years. It was created imperceptibly, and by identification with it, we separate ourselves from our true nature. The reality of our story is that we have been conditioned against ourselves. You see, this is one of the unfortunate things that happen as we grow up, that our parents generally, but it can be some other person like a, an auntie or a grandfather or whoever it is, who has the most influence in your life, uh, that they gradually have conditioned you with certain ideas which may be correct for them, but they may not be the correct ideas for you. But inevitably, when you're a, a, a child, you can easily accept, or you need to accept, uh, what is being suggested to you. And gradually, with the help of your parents, you create, well, inside you is created what we can call an ego or a me. So we have an identification, a strong identification with this thing that has been developing very gradually, very imperceptibly over many years as we grow up, certain ideas. Mm -hmm. And these ideas have become so familiar that we took, call, call these ideas me, me. So we're very much identified to the point where, as Carly was saying, they become a kind of habit. As we grow up, grew up, you were often told it was not really acceptable to have the feelings you did have. Maybe your mother told you to go outside and play at a time when actually you just wanted to be close to her. Anyway, you go outside and play, have a great time, and get totally covered in mud and grass, uh, and grass. you come back to the house, and perhaps she's angry that you made such a mess, and couldn't you just be more careful? It may, it may look completely normal, and it might be only a small thing, but to a sensitive child, and often repeated, it can deeply affect them. They can then, sorry, they can grow up with an apparently built-in sense of division, of not being good enough. Yeah? So this, this happens to quite a lot of people that the conditioning they had when they were young created a deep structure inside their mind where basically they believed themselves not to be good enough. You see, many of us I think, know this structure, not good enough. And when you have this structure, of course, you are then always looking in your life to prove to other people, maybe prove to yourself, that you are good enough. In order to be yourself, you have to recognize this division. And then when you feel tears, for example, just accept them. 
If you feel anger, just accept the anger. If you feel unhappy, accept the feeling of being unhappy. If you feel sad, accept feeling sad. Just allow yourself to be with a deep acceptance because you can't be wrong. When you accept what is intensely and completely, it changes quite quickly to something else. So the best way to deal with, with feelings is not to say, oh, I shouldn't be angry or I shouldn't be sad, is rather to completely accept whatever the feeling is. And if you can do every day to accept completely whatever the feeling is that comes, you quickly discover that by itself it changes. Yeah. These feelings, they stay only for a short time, actually. There's no problem with just accepting the feeling. Whether you blame your feelings onto somebody else is, is a different quality, a different uh, situation. So basically, we don't want to be saying that you made me angry. You know? He made me angry. He made me sad. So this isn't helpful, um, and it gets quite complicated. But if we just accept everything that's happening to us out of a sense of understanding that it can't really be different, it's going to be as it is. You see? And once we clearly understand this, then there's something very attractive because you can simply accept in every moment that whatever is happening is happening because that's where you're meant to be and that's the feeling that's meant to be happening and how you then respond to that moment is also exactly as it's meant to be and therefore life goes on in a very simple way from moment to moment the problems start when you don't accept that when you start to have ideas it, it shouldn't be like that it should be like this or i don't like that I would like to change it and be in some other way. Yeah. I don't really live here. I would much rather be somewhere else. And this wanting to be somewhere else actually is a kind of common um, situation, many people, that they always feel that maybe over there will be better than where I am now. You see? And so that, of course, creates an enormous division inside because it apparently seems to be that you're always wrong. You're always in the wrong place. But that's not true. You're exactly in the right place. And in fact, you can't really be anywhere else. Because if you could be somewhere else, why you wouldn't be somewhere else? You see? And this is the best part now, the best part now. To be who you are is just given. You don't have to do anything. It's amazing. You don't have to do anything to be who you are. It's just given. Of course, if you spend time sitting quietly, that will be very supportive. But then just accept what is. Accept the thoughts except the feelings. The alternative is to maintain the duality of being a somebody. This takes a lot of work. And you can see this, you know. If you've got certain ideas about how you would like to be, and then you try to create those ideas, you try to become the person you think you would like to be, then this is a huge job. But to be yourself, just stop to do anything. And then you automatically come inside to who you are. Ramana Mahashi used to say, be as you are. He didn't say, 
be like me. He didn't say, be like that guy over there. He said, be as you are. Actually, what can you do? Even if you spend your whole life trying to be somebody else, in the end, you'll come to see that you can only be as you are. There's no other possibility. And anyway, if existence wanted you to be somebody else, then probably you would be somebody else. But probably it wanted you to be just as you are. It's a very beautiful invitation. Seeing the possibility of real peace is a big moment. What is peace? It is accepting what is. It's very simple, actually. You're never going to change what is, so you might as well accept it. Everything is already as it should be. Be as you are is pointing to the possibility that you can come into a deep inner harmony, no longer divided. You are still very much an individual, but there is just being unfolding from moment to moment, very simple. And this is our life. It's just unfolding from moment to moment and always in presence. So if you're really completely present and your life therefore is unfolding, you hardly need to think. One thing takes you to the next thing. The next thing takes you to another thing. The other thing takes you to yet again something. And the moments of your life are simply unfolding. There's a plan, you know, there is a, there is a, um, kind of what we couldn't call a destiny at work. And that's why I would say that as I grew up in my life, um, I saw more and more how this divine wisdom is an amazing kind of phenomenon. We can't really talk about it. We can't really e easily understand it. And I think nobody knows really how it works. Uh, but it, it, it works. Uh, for example, uh, last week, as most of you know, we won a court case so that we can almost certainly stay in the house where we've been living for 20 years. So this, this was a very important moment which had been developing over the last two years. And uh, last week, um, it all came together in a good way. And we don't know finally, but probably we're going to be able to stay in this house. And the court has told us we need to negotiate with the um, the owner of the house. We have one month to uh, negotiate an agreement together. So we, after this court finished, we 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 sat together and talked about it, and we realized that. The thing that we would really like is now to buy the house, you see. And we were offered this house um, six years ago at a rather cheap price by the old owner who liked us very much. And he knew we looked after his house very well. He was very attached to this house. He, his, he had grown up in this house when he was a kid. And uh, his mother loved the house very much and so on. But we had no money in those days. We just didn't have anybody in the house with any money. And now, in this moment, when we now have a chance again to buy the house, it turns out that four people, four residents, have had their parents pass away in the last years, in the last six years, if you like. And each of these parents have left some money to their kids. You can call it a heritage. And so suddenly we, without doing anything, we've got a million euros as a heritage. 
And as some of you can imagine, if you go to a bank and say, I've got one million, they're pretty happy to lend you another million because uh, that's quite impressive that you have so much money together. And so the, the uh, advice we've been getting in the last week is that the, the, the chances are we'll be able to get a loan from a bank and have enough money. We need probably a bit over two million to buy the house uh, that we'll get one, one of the millions from the bank and the other million we've got from the heritages, which has happened in the right moment. And at the bottom of the screen, you can see a guy sitting in front of a tree called David. So David showed up here a few days ago and he was actually didn't he didn't know this, but he was scripted by the divine wisdom, you see, because it turns out he's one of these kind of smart business people who every day are dealing with banks and dealing with buying things and all this. And so we spent most of this afternoon talking together and he gave us a lot of advices about what we would need to do to buy the house, you see. So how come he arrived this week? Because if he would have arrived last week before the court, we wouldn't even be excited to buy the house. And if he'd come, you know, I don't know, two or three months ago, we were probably at that time thinking we were going to lose the court case. So we wouldn't have been very interested to talk to him about buying the house, you see. But he, instead of that, he arrived just in the right moment, you see. So how, how are these things possible even? Some of them are truly amazing. And you can look into your own life and find certain moments in your life when uh, think something happened, which was a bit unusual, maybe it doesn't happen so often in your life. You can look in your life and then realize that that thing, whatever it was, has been a very important moment in, you, in, in your life developing. And you probably will find when you, when you come to this moment, you'll find that actually it just happened, you see. In fact, I'm reminded um, uh, that we have uh, Saraswati here and she was talking just before. So until, I don't know, two months ago, she was a full-on medical student studying to be a doctor and uh, rushing to get me for some exams in the autumn and then she was planning to go to a hospital and do a practice year and then probably being, a, being what i know her to be she was planning another six years to become a, a heart surgeon or brain surgeon or i don't know what she was planning and then i don't know about two months ago she came to our community for a weekend and since that weekend, she never really left. And a short time ago, at the beginning of the month, she moved into the community as a resident. Her mother is completely happy with her. Well, let's say her mother's happy that she's happy. And so she's got a support from her parents. And, um, and here she is, you see. So how is that possible? Because until two months ago, she had a program She's going to be, I don't know, what she kind of doctor she was planning. Um, but anyway, maybe she'd still be that kind of doctor. We don't know what's going to happen. But at the moment, she uh, easily decided that so there's something here in this house, in this community, which is somehow important to her at the moment in her life. She's rather young. I think she's, I don't know, 22 or something. And... Um, so this is a very important moment for her, you see. So if we if we see the kind of things like that that have happened in our lives in the past, it makes it, I think, a lot easier to then trust what's happening in our life now, you see. Okay, so anybody else like to wave their arm, have a dialogue about this whole be as you are.
Okay. Good. So um, <clears throat> there'll be another meeting next Thursday. And then I'll be away for uh, three weeks. I'm going to take my daughters on a holiday through through Europe. We're going to Spain and France. And um, so I won't be making these meetings for three weeks. So we'll have a last meeting next next Thursday. And tomorrow in the Open Sky House, there'll be a live meeting because we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of our community, which is a pretty amazing moment because in this 20 years, uh, we almost got no no donation, no donations. In the, in this 20 years, we're completely self-supporting. And of course, anybody who comes here can see we work a lot, but that gives us a tremendous freedom because we can then spend the money exactly as we like. So um, we're gonna gonna have a weekend of seminars and uh, meetings and celebration, and we'll start tomorrow here in the house at eight o'clock with a a meeting with John Davies. Okay, so if you haven't already planned to come for the weekend, you still have time. Good. Thank you. <clears throat>